Hi everyone, welcome to the family table. My name is Kathy Melanson and I am so excited to let you know we are going into season three. Believe it or not, it's been three years since we started doing the family table. What we're gonna do this year to kind of liven things up, we're gonna go around the world. We're gonna have different recipes from different nationalities and other cultures and different things to kind of like spice up your life. It's been three years, we're gonna do something different and we're gonna go on board now that we're moving forward. So let me start season three. Hi everyone, welcome to the family table. What we're gonna start with today is hot cross buns. I never liked them when I was little. I used to just lick the icing off. And my father, he's a good Joe, and his name was Joe. He would just eat them anyways. He never complained. He knew that was the only part I really liked. So we're gonna start on our hot cross buns. As you can see, I'm trying to get everything out and I will explain to you why I do things. Um, obviously, once you get going and you're trying to do something, different spices, you might wanna change, but I'm gonna show you what I do. So we're gonna take our bowl and we're gonna put it over here off the mixer. We're gonna get our dry ingredients ready. We're gonna get our flour. Ugh, my big sink of flour here. And yes, you will see that I sometimes do make a mess, but it is what it is, right? So we've discussed this before, when you're doing your flour and your dry ingredients, make sure you have a knife or something flat that you can level it off. Bacon is like a science. You have to have precise measurements when it comes to flour, um, any ingredients really, but your flour, your sugar, you should always even it off like this. And then you clean up the mess later. So we'll get this four cups of flour. We're gonna put that right in the bowl here. We're gonna get this out of our way. Along with that, we are gonna put our sugar in. I um, just want to make sure, we're going to do a fourth cup of sugar. My sugar's right here. I always check the recipe. You should always read your recipes first. And as you're going, just give it a check because you don't want to put the wrong thing in. What did I just do with my knife? Oh, here it is. So, fourth cup of sugar. Then we're going to put in all our dry, our other um, spices. So we're going to use ground ginger, ground nutmeg, cinnamon, and some salt. The salt is an eighth. So here's this little eighth. The eighth is about, or the teaspoon is about, you can stop measuring it in your hand. I always measure it in the cup of my hand because I've done this so many times that I can do it. If you're unsure, obviously measure it out. That was an eighth. The ground ginger, we are going to use just a quarter teaspoon, which is right here, quarter teaspoon, ground ginger. Just wipe it right off there. Nutmeg, that's a half. Half a teaspoon with your nutmeg. And the cinnamon is a, it's a teaspoon, like, it's one teaspoon of cinnamon. It's a little hard to do this with this because it does not fit in the scraper. A 
teaspoon. So now that's all your dry ingredients, except for the yeast. You have to use fast rise yeast. Yeast. Well, I'm going to have a problem with that word today. We'll get that right in there. Dough hook. Now, if you do not have a dough hook, so you don't have a setup like this, you will have to be doing this by your hands. So if you have strong arms, you can most certainly need your, your bread dough on your, your counter. So we're going to have four eggs. I leave my eggs out when I'm baking. So whatever I'm doing early, I get everything ready. So in this time, we need three large eggs. So I got my eggs all ready. It's been... I took them out early this morning because I knew I was going to be doing this baking. They're at room temperature. I got me a bowl here to throw all my junk in. I'll just leave it right there for now. It's all set. I want to just smash them and get them a little mixed. Now off to the side, I have buttermilk. It's a three quarter cup of buttermilk. I've warmed it up. It is now at a temperature of 110. It can be a little higher, but it shouldn't be lower. So you would have to warm it up. So you put your buttermilk in it and give it a good stir because buttermilk tends to separate a little bit because it's buttermilk. It's pretty much like sour milk. But it does very well in, uh, in baking applications. Then this is six tablespoons of butter, melted. I'll put that in there. So now this is our wet ingredients. We'll mix that all up. Now what we're going to do is we're going to get this going. So we're going to put our machine here on low. We'll let it mix a little bit. Then we're going to pour our wet ingredients in. Now while that's mixing, we're going to let it mix a little bit. What makes hot cross buns really good is your raisins. I like cranberries also, so I mix raisins and cranberries up. Now when you have the raisins, they seem to be dry. Cranberries seem to be a little bit more plump. So my raisins and my cranberries, as you can see, are nice and plump. The reason why they're nice and plump, because I had them soaking in vodka for two days. You can use rum, you can use whiskey, you can use apple juice. I choose vodka this time. Sometimes it's rum. Now, it doesn't, it's not gonna get you drunk, it's not gonna get you tipsy, but it's gonna taste good. So while that's mixing, we are going to take a half a cup of these delicious raisins and cranberries, and we're gonna push it into the cup because we want, you know, a good amount. And we are going to put it in our mix. Ah, we want to get every single one of those in there. So, and you can make uh, quite a few of them. Just store them in a closed container, a seal tight container, and you can put it on your pantry shelf. They, that it'll be fine. We are going to watch this go for, I'm going to say 10 minutes, but it doesn't always take 10 minutes. You're going to keep going until it pulls away from the side of the bowl. And you can see that it's not dry. It's kind of like, got a nice smooth smoothness to it. 
And when you take it out, it's going to feel a little bit elastic, like elasticy. And that's when you know your dough is done. So we're just going to move this out of the way. What we're going to do is we're going to get this bowl prepped. When this is all done, we're going to take it, we're going to put it in this bowl. I'm going to spray it with, I, I love this stuff because it's got the oil, it's got the flour, it's got everything already in it. I use this a lot for coating my pans. We're going to put it in there. I got some plastic wrap that I used earlier for the same application. I'm going to use that. So we got a little ways to go with that. It needs to proof for two hours. So this is not a quickie. You can't just get this done fast. So once we get this in there, it's going to need to proof for two hours. And then after it proofs for two hours, we're going to cut them in little balls. It's about a two and a half ounce balls. And we're going to place it in, the, in another pan or a cooking dish. And it has to proof again for about an hour. Because once you play with the dough, you need to let it rest again. You can't just do it and then it's just nice to let the um the dough actually rest uh at another time after that process obviously it goes in the oven i'm going to show you how to make a simple syrup and it is simple and when it comes out of the oven what i like to do is brush it with a simple syrup right when it's hot and then let it sit there for a little bit and then we ice it that to me is the best part and then, lo and behold, you have your hot cross buns. I think that looks good. It is now pulled away from all the side. The bowl is almost totally clear. It's in a ball on the hook. We're going to stop that there. I'm going to take this out. I'm going to show you. Whoops. It is a ball. The hook comes right out, nothing is sticking to it. It can come right out in a ball. It's kind of like a lax, see? Oh. We're gonna take this out. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna put it in this ball. Once you put it in the bowl, always flip it. So you have it coated on the top too. Make sure it's covered tight. And then, now, I, I happen to have a proofer. So, I'm sure not everybody has one, and that's okay. Just make sure it's in a warm spot. When you're doing dough, bread, you do not want it to get drafty. Now, you can also put bread dough in the refrigerator. You can actually kind of proof in the refrigerator, but you still have to do the heating process and proof it after. So what we're gonna do with that, we're gonna stick it right here in the proofer. Now, as you can see, my proof is all set, but what I have to show you is one already done. So this has been sitting there for about two and a half hours. So I have that all set. I'm just going to move this right out of the way here. Just hook it back up just to get it out of the way. And this is what we have. It has pretty much doubled in size. Look at that. I'm going to take a little bit of flour so it won't stick to my counter. You know, another nice kitchen gadget, and I know I talk about kitchen gadgets a lot, because some of them are very worth it and some of them aren't, is um, your instant read thermometer. You should have a couple of them. They're very, very useful. So we're gonna take this out. Look at that, isn't that beautiful? Oh, I think it's just so beautiful. I'm gonna get this bowl out of the way too. Let me just put it over here for now. Get that out of the way. So, now, I use these occasionally. These are nice because you want to give them away, so they're already in there. I just use this for the family. So I'm going to get that one prepped. I may have to use the big one, but right now I'm just going to get this one ready. 
If I have to use a big one, I will. So now, oh, nice little scale. Should always have a kitchen scale. That's another thing that's, it's a nice little thing to have. It's beyond just a gadget. Okay. So now, take a little cutter and get these anywhere. We are going to cut these to about, like I said, about two and a half ounces. And then you're going to just put them in a little ball. And you're going to put them right in here. So we're going to get this going. And they can, they're going to touch. Um, actually, you kind of want them to touch because that's the thing. You know, if you ever went and bought hot cross buns in the grocery store, you pretty much get them almost in a pan like this. And they're just all in there like almost like one big bun. My little raisins. That's in the warmer. We're going to do our uh, simple syrup. Simple syrup is nice because it's um, it's just water and sugar, really. And um, the thing with simple syrup, you just close it, put it in a tight container, and just put it on your shelf. Simple syrup can be used in different applications, like um, drinks, different drinks. Ask for a little bit of simple syrup. Uh, we're going to use them in one of our recipes that we're going to do a little later on um, one of the other shows, which you're going to take um, croissants, and we're going to soak the croissants in simple syrup. Will you look at that? Okay. Okay. Now this I'm just going to cover with the, the little covers that come with it. This I am going to put right here. Cling wrap. Some work, some don't. This one's a good one. So this is all set now. So what we're going to do with this one is I'm just going to move it to a different... And look, it's like magic. There's some right in here. Will you look at that? So now we have, now this will be two hours. I have to put more time on here. Whoops. No, I want that timer. So I'm going to put at least two hours. I, it's not going to be two hours. But if I put two hours, hour and a half, at least I'm, I'm pretty good there. Okay, so. I've had these sitting in there. As you can see, they have now rose. I'm going to take these covers off and we're going to put them in the oven. Look at that. Oh. I've now come to know that I really like hot cross buns. Whoops. I am going to get my little mitts here because I don't want to burn myself. I pretty much always use the middle rack. And I try to put it in the middle of the middle rack. So we're going to just get these right here. All set. We're going to put this on for 20 minutes. And with the instant read thermometer, we're also going to, whoops, we're also going to check it. It should be, it should be an internal temperature of almost 200 for your buns, but you can really check them yourself. You're going to see the golding on the top and you're going to push them down and you're going to have that. So now we got that in the oven. In the meantime, what we're going to do is get the simple syrup ready. Like I was saying about simple syrup, number one, it is simple. And number two, you can use it for a lot of other things. So right now I am just going to get my sugar 
my water. So it's three parts water, one part, two parts sugar. Now the other thing with simple syrup, you can use it to feed your hummingbirds. Now I just read somewhere that do not put the food coloring in your hummingbird mixture. When you buy it, you buy that nectar at the store, you can actually buy the clear and you can buy the, um, the red one. Now that's something I didn't know, so it's do not use the red. That's fine. So you make a bunch of this. We're gonna use this for our croissants too after. And um, I've already made it. I keep it in a mason jar. I use it for drinks if I'm making certain kind of punches or you know, whatever. Not that I, you know, I'm a heavy drinker or anything, but it's those fancy, you know, fruity drinks. So I keep it on my in my pantry shelf. So we are going to have two cups. Oh, I don't have another measuring cup, so these are only a quart this is a quarter cup, so I do this eight times. One, two, three, one cup. Okay, that's two cups. off to the side. Now, medium high and pretty much you're going to have it come to a boil. When it comes to a boil it's going to be, it's going to look cloudy and maybe even a little foamy but you're going to let it cook down and it will come out at some point. It will, uh, I'll use this one. It will end up being clear, just like what you see over there. Now, this is also a way of making um, candy, too. You can, um, if you continue to cook it to like a hot crack stage, you, you can make candies. You can, um, I mean, it's simple, it's just sugar and water, but you can do a lot of things with sugar and water. So when that's, all that's getting ready, what I will show you is, I have to keep my eye on that. We're gonna make the, the icing. So the icing is very simple. You're gonna take, oh, I want this, confectionery sugar. And we're gonna do ooh, one cup of confectionery sugar. Again, we're gonna use this one. Same thing. Cup of confectionery sugar. We're gonna go with half and half. We're gonna go with two tablespoons first. Now it doesn't sound like a lot, but I use the tablespoon. Teaspoon, where's my tablespoon? Oh, right here, tablespoon. Whoops, two. And the reason why, and we're gonna keep this right here, because when you're putting liquid to confectionery sugar, you really do not need a lot of liquid. And you want the icing a thick consistency because you want it to stay on your buns. Okay. We're gonna go with a teaspoon of vanilla. Now with the vanilla, again, 
I know I've said this before. I use pure vanilla. And um, pure vanilla can be, you know, definitely it's more than um, imitation. So we'll go with that. It's definitely more than imit imitation. But I got to tell you, it tastes, it's, it's, it's worth it. It's absolutely worth it. So get that in there. Get our vanilla. And we're just going to stir it. We're going to stir it till it's nice and smooth. We don't have to mix it. We don't have to put it in a mixer. We don't have to dig out the mixer. That's looking pretty good already. Now, if it was too thick, obviously, you would add a little bit more of um, the half and half. Too thin, you add a little bit more confectionery sugar. I think that's pretty good. Maybe a little sugar, I think. I do want it to stay on. It's a little. Okay. Oh, okay. On me. Oh, here we go. It is not cloudy anymore. It's already getting clear. We just want to start seeing some bubbles. Oh, got something in my thing. Now, this glazing. Don't put the glazing on till it cools off because what will happen, obviously, it'll melt right off. And you'll just have a glazy puddle. So, yeah, that's nice, nice and smooth. There we go. So I'm going to actually put that in the pastry bag. Um, I have these pastry bags. You can get them at any store. Or you can just use a baggie, fill it up, cut off the little corner, and lo and behold, you've got your own little bag. You don't need to have a um, you don't need to have a tip on it because you've already cut out the bag. Okay. okay. My little towel here. Back to my sugar. Whoops. What is that floating around in there? Oh, uh, yes. I got something in there. I'll take that. Just make sure you just keep it stirring. It's, it's coming. Should be boiling shortly. Um, you just want it to come to a boil because you want to make sure that the sugar is truly melted. Now, I'm just going to pour this in my bag. As you can see, I got my bag in a cup. It just makes it a little bit easier. That way it'd be all ready when I'm ready to ice the buns. Okay. There we go. I'm just gonna move this off to the side here. And then this will go over here, out of the way. Back to, oh, I got it. It's almost there. Okay, so once that's done, again, we're just gonna pull it off to the side till the buns are done. Once the buns come out, it's you have to glaze them right when it's hot. Like I said, I have this right here ready. Um, that definitely makes about a, what is this, a quart? So you have plenty. Um, the buns, we'll just give it a look, see. Oh, they're looking so good. Oh, can you see that in there? Let me move this right out of your way. I'm just going to clean up this mess a little bit, and we'll show you the buns. We could take a little break right now until the buns are done. So the simple syrup is boiling, so we're going to shut it down, take it off the, the stove. As you can see, it's, it's nice and bubbly, and it is clear. So again, 
you know what, just make some, use it for what you're going to use it for now, and then keep it in a, a jar. I, like I said, I keep it in a mason jar, and I don't put it in the fridge. It's just water and sugar. I just put it right on my pantry shelf. So we got that there. Now, the hot cross buns, oh, I used, to, I used to watch the Food Network all the time, and they used to say, oh, I wish you had smell-o-vision, but, oh, I really wish you had smell-o-vision. It is so wonderful, but I am going to peek in. Ooh. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to quickly check it with my Insta thermometer, and we're going to see where it is it's nice and golden it has five more minutes on so let's just do it and we're going to stick it in this one well i would have to say it is five more minutes well that was perfect timing huh so we got our hot our extremely hot and I'm going to say this again, this is extremely hot, but I am going to put it in a measuring cup. And the reason why, because it's easier to handle it from the measuring cup, especially when I want to go pour it in a jar. So we're going to put it right in there. We're going to put this out of our way because we don't need that. Now, when I go to use it on the thing, now it's easier for me to handle. However, I'm going to put it in a smaller measuring cup because I'm going to use a brush to brush it on. So I'm going to use this. And that way, if I need more, I can just pour it in there. And we're going to be ready. we got a, just a couple more minutes on the. I am not even going to bother using that again because I know it's five more minutes. And we're going to go from there. When we finish our hot cross buns, we're going to move into Zeppoli's. So Zeppoli's is uh, an Italian um, dessert. There, it's, it's big around St. Joseph's Day. Just like any other dessert, you can make it any time. When I had my bakery, we fried them. I had this donut machine, which was fantastic. I actually still have it, but my husband said I can't bring it upstairs and put it on the counter. Sad, but I get it. And um, so we're going to bake the shells. We're going to make a simple pâte de croûte, which is a, a, a pâte de is usually French, but it's just easier to do it. But we're going to bake it to make it a little bit easier for everybody. I'm going to show you how to make a nice pastry cream to go with it. And um, I hope everybody makes it for St. Joseph's Day or at least for, for um, Easter. So we got two minutes. I'm going to get my little mitts on. And we're going to take our lovely hot cross buns out. So here we go, the timer. We're done. And here we go. Our beautiful hot cross buns. Look at that. There we go. As you can see, one made uh, 18 there. These pans are wonderful because when it's all cooled and ready to go, you put those little covers on that I had on and they're gone. So now it's hot. It's right out of the oven. Now this is hot, but it's hot because we just made it. You don't have to just make it. If you have it, you have it. Um, I could have used the one that's in the jar. And you just coat your nice and hot. You coat it. Look at that. There we go. Now we just let that sit there for a while, let it cool off. And then we'll, um, I'll show you how to glaze them. But in the meantime, we'll take a break and we'll start with Zeppelis. Okay, so now it's Zeppelis time. Again, it's one of those things that we use for um, holidays, but doesn't necessarily have to be for just holidays. So in a medium saucepan, we are going to take a stick of butter, 
Got my butter right here. I keep that also out at room temperature. And we are going to put that right into the saucepan. There we go. We're going to use two, three tablespoons of sugar. I can do it this way. It's like a simple pat -a crew but, um, and that also can be used for uh, cream puffs or eclairs. Now, I usually, cup of water, I usually fry my um, zeppelis, but we're going to bake them. Um, it's, it's, it's definitely easier to bake them than to fry them because you have to maintain your oil temperature at all times. A half a teaspoon of salt, a quarter teaspoon of salt. There we go. And then we're going to put four cups of flour in after, but right now we just want to get this melted. So we're going to put it onto the stove, medium low. I'm going to get that melted and we're going to get our flour ready. It's four cups of flour. What I'm going to do with my flour is I'm going to put it in my, I'm going to put it in the, in the pan. I'm going to bring that to a boil and then I'm going to put it in the pan and then I'm going to put it in here. So we're going to take the four cups of flour and we're going to put it in, let me just grab a bowl. We'll put it in a bowl, get it ready to go in. That way it'd be a little bit easier and ready to go. So, four cups. Again, make sure you take it. Oh, I'm sorry, one cup of flour. I don't know why I was going with the four. I was going with four eggs. We're gonna add the flour to this after it's melted. And then we're going to actually put this into the mixer. We're going to add our eggs slowly. After this is mixed. And then it's pretty simple after that. Then we're going to make a nice pastry cream. Now the pastry cream we're going to use for the Zeppelis, but the pastry cream you can use it for anything. You know, um, this is, just, I mean, actually, you can just eat it if you want, but I, mean, I wouldn't get used to doing that. It could be a little, you know, dangerous to your waistband. But have at it if you want. So, my butt is melted. Just going to bring this up to a boil. And then we're just going to take it off, add it to the, add the flour to it, and we're going to have that ready to go. And then we'll start the pastry cream as soon as we get this in the oven. So after it's ready, what I'm going to do is I am going to put it in a pastry bag. The pastry bag, I'm going to look for it. It's right here. Excuse me. Let me just grab a pastry bag. You know, I have one somewhere. Again, if you don't have a pastry bag, I suggest you use a large baggie for this one. Pastry bags, I fit with a circle, but if you're just using a baggie, you just cut it and then you'll just have a big enough circle to make your, your pastry, your thing. Oh. Really? Oh, I got it. It is boiling. Bring it to a boil. Okay. Put down the pastry bag. I'm going to bring it. I'm going to leave the, the stove on because I'm going to bring it right back over there. So it's at the boil. And I'm just going to put our flour in. Just be careful when you're 
stirring it that you're not splashing it all over yourself. Now, we got it all mixed. We're bringing it back to the thing. So now what we're doing back on the burner is we're actually going to cook it because you don't want anything tasting like flour. So we're going to cook this and we're going to keep stirring it. It's about three minutes. It's going to come to a nice ball. You'll know when you're stirring it that it does. You can see some of the flour mixture in it. So obviously you do not want the flour in there. So you want to keep mixing it so you don't see any flour mixture. I will go about three minutes. Okay. There we go. So we'll just, and you just keep moving it around because have a nice non-stick pan does help. Okay, so as you can see, it's all nicely done. It's all mixed and if I wanted to put it all in a ball, obviously I could. So I'm going to take it now. I'm going to put it in my mixer. I'm going to put it right in here. Whew. Just be Oops. There goes one Zeppelin on the floor. I'm going to just take this out of the way. I'm just going to push it and get it later. Oh, when I let the dog out, the dog will get it later. So we're going to put it right in here. And we're going to use our, just our little beater here. Oh, let me put it down. And get this right in here. Okay. Put that up. Now, it's the eggs. And we're going to add them one at a time. It's four eggs. I'm going to start mixing this. And we're going to go up easy. out of the way before I burn myself. I'm just going to let that mix a little bit to get those other eggs that I put in incorporated. I'm going to cut this. Okay, that's the four eggs. We're going to let that mix. When that is done, we're going to put it in the pastry bag. And we're going to put it on a cookie sheet. Oh, I had it right here. Cookie sheet. My other ones I made. I use this one instead. Now nah, I use the new one. Pretty good. I do have to say that a stand mixer, it's, it's a, definitely a plus. If you don't have one, you know, no big deal, but you got to understand, you'll be standing there with your hand mixer. This is nice, especially when you're doing anything to do with dough. Um, even something like this, because you want to get those eggs in there one at a time. You really want to look at what you're doing. These are the, the um, I like these, this mixer because it's got the rubber. It scrapes the side of the pan. It's better than 
this one, this one's fine, but the one that scrapes the pan is like the best. So I got all my batter. I got it all in there. As you can see, it's one lump. Pretty much gonna take it with my hands. Well, now I'm gonna take it with this because it's gonna stick to my hands. Come on. I don't want it sticking to my hands. Sometimes having an extra hand is good too, but that's not always the case. So this is really a basic patacrew. And like I said, you can use this to make your um, cream puff shells, eclair shells, all kinds of shells. And let me just wipe my hands. Get this out of the way. Okay. Now. This takes a little, a little strength here. Before I opened up my bakery, I used to make all birthday cakes for my children, my grandchildren. But I gotta say, it ended up being that I just couldn't do it anymore. My, um, my hands were killing me. I had this lovely little uh, ganglion cyst on my wrist. And then I just couldn't do it. So this was always the hard part. And then I used to make all those different color frostings. Oh my God. It was, it was a challenge to say the least. So I, these are cooking. <laughs> okay. See if I could squeeze any more in now. I want to actually push these down a little bit. These are kind of tiny, but we're gonna, Tiny's not bad. We're gonna start this off at 400, 10 minutes. And then we're gonna drop it down to 350. I'm just gonna get these just ready to go in a this pan. Oops. This is parchment paper, as you can see. Um, keeps your pans clean. It helps your items pop off a lot better. I think that's about it. Or, yeah, we won't even bother with this guy. I'll just add him to here. Okay. Or if you want to make eclair, eclairs, you can um, do it longer. They have like um, hot dog bun pans. You could use those, or you can just eyeball it. So I'll do these later. Just get this out of the way. We got that for 10 minutes, and then we're gonna lower, lower the oven, and we're not gonna open it when we lower it because you don't wanna do that, so we're just gonna lower it. So now we're gonna do the pastry cream. So. Let's do, we're gonna use this pan because as you can see, it came out nice and clean. So we are gonna use the same pan. We are going to, in the saucepan, we are gonna scald our milk. So I got, I'm gonna just grab the milk out of the fridge and um, we're gonna get our milk in the thing. Scalding it is having it come up to like, um, bubbly but not over boiling we're going to do it in a medium to high heat it's actually a, whoops one and a quarter cup of milk i use um in my house we use two percent but it could be it could be any it could be 
1% whole milk, doesn't really matter. So let's get our milk going. Medium high. Oh, medium low. <laughs> medium high. <laughs> Make sure we get that right in there. So we're going to watch it because it'll, it'll, it'll come up pretty um, good. So it's just going to start to bubble. Then around the edges, you'll see it. We are going to, while the milk is heating in a small bowl, we are going to do our pastry cream. Yeah, let me get a bowl. I think I'll use, I'll use the glass one, it's easier. So we're gonna get our oh, cake flour. It's a nicer, it's a smoother flour. So you do want to use cake flour for this one. So cake flour, we're going to just use a quarter of a cup. I'm going to use this one right here. Quarter of a cup of cake flour. I'll put it right in that bowl. It's a nice, it's a finer flour. And then we're gonna do our sugar, which is a quarter of a cup also. And we're gonna, and we are gonna watch our milk. We're gonna watch our milk there. I've been known to you know, do other things and forget what I was doing or what I started. And then, and then it comes out too, not too good. So I gotta keep myself on track here. We want our salt. Again. It's just a half a teaspoon of salt. So now that we have this, we're gonna just mix this up a little bit. Now the milk is heating, small bowl, stir to prevent clumping, which I am. Milk is coming up. Okay, so the milk is now at, at the scalding point. I'm just going to take it off and move it over to here so I can have everything ready here. I'm going to end up putting it back on. So the milk is all set. I got my flour all set. Now we're going to mix the flour and the sugar all this and we're going to add the eggs to it and we're going to whisk the egg yolks and it's egg yolks so let me just grab this um, oh, sorry I just want to get a little bowl so I can put my eggs in four egg yolks Keep my eye on the um they do have gadgets for this just so you know it's up to you you know if you really want to do that it's really it's simple enough to do but you got to pay attention because as soon as you crack that yolk, especially if you want egg whites, as soon as you crack that yolk and get the, the yolk into the whites, it ain't going to work. So just make sure if it's doing just the egg yolks and you get, a, you get a little extra white in there, that's not a big deal. If you're doing egg whites and you get a little yolk in there, that is a big deal. So we got that. Okay. 
Okay, so now the milk has come to a boil. I've had my dry ingredients here, my eggs in here. I am going to add the egg yolks to the dry ingredients. And we're going to get this all nice and mixed. There we go. It's a big clump at this point. But now what we have to do is take it out of here and mix it. Oh, let's take my whisk, sorry, and get this stuff out of the whisk. So now we whisked it, whisked it. And then we're gonna use the, okay. So now we're gonna do this. We have to now mix the hot milk. And I'm just pouring the hot milk into something that I can handle a little bit better. And we're going to put it right into here a little at a time because the milk is hot, the eggs are not hot, and we definitely do not want to scramble anything. So what this is called is tempering your eggs. And my little things. There we go. Just keep scraping it down, adding a little at a time. And when we're done mixing this, we're going to actually cook this. So we're going to lower this now to 350. Okay. And that is going to be for another 10 minutes. Whoops. Whoops. 10 minutes. And then we're going to just double check them afterwards just to make sure because I did make them smaller. Actually, I put it on for 15, so. I have learned to definitely use timers. Um, I could multitask and I think I can still multitask, but I definitely need something to tell me up. Oh, time's up because you just get involved with so many other things. And if you're trying to do the shells and pastry cream and everything has to be done to a certain amount of time, yeah, just use a timer. Get extra ones. You know, people have their smart watches, they got their phones, they got their microwaves. You know what, you can still buy those little ones at the, at the uh, kitchen centers. Uh, the kitchen departments of all stores, you know, get a cute one. I got one shaped like a cat. But, yeah. Okay, we're going to add it to the pan. Right back. We're going to put it back on the heat. And now we are going to cook our pastry cream until it's done. And then when it's all done, that's when we're going to add a little bit of vanilla. So we're going to get this going. This is medium low this time. And then we're going to add our vanilla when it's all done. Just a teaspoon. I'm going to wait about, it's going to take about three minutes, maybe just a little bit longer. It's going to be thick. You're going to, you're going to see it. It's going to start to thicken up. And um, you just got to kind of babysit it a little bit. You're going to know it's going to come together really quick. So you stir it. When it starts to boil, it's at the bubble, I should say, you can stop stirring for a few seconds and just kind of keep an eye on it because when it's ready, it's ready. And then we're going to run it through a little sieve afterwards. What I would do with this is when it's done, 
I actually like to put it in the mixer and whip it. See, it's already starting to get thick. Now we have it, it's nice and thick. Take it off the heat. good <laughs> sorry gotta have a little fun now I can use this I think put the wire with on it. Okay, now teaspoon of vanilla. Just gonna let that whisk up of just a just a minute or so. Make sure the vanilla is all mixed up in there. Okay. And now we have pastry cream. Now you have to let the pastry cream cool off, as you can see. So we'll just let it sit there and let it cool off. But I will show you pastry cream that is done. Now these shells have another nine minutes, nine minutes. So what I did ahead of time was I did make some, I made them in kind of different shapes. They're a little, you know, different. And I do have some pastry cream and I will get that out. I'll show you my pastry cream, which is pretty well done over here. We have some whipped cream too. This is what you do. You take your shells. I'll do this one too. I'll show you if they come out of the oven in time. We're going to take our pastry cream, which oh, I have some right over here, all in the container. Ah, look at this. Pastry cream, cherries, sugar. Um, let's go with some, oh, whipped cream we'll put in, in my bag. I got a whipped cream here somewhere too. Yeah, it should get organized. Whipped cream bag. So what you're going to do is you're going to take the pastry cream and you're going to cut it. I mean the, uh, the shelves. Just going to cut it down. I'm going to do this one. This one's a little bit bigger. I'd put it in a fancier pan to see if it would come out, but it was maybe a little too fancy. And we're going to put it, I'll just flip this upside down for now. Look at this. I'll show you the ones when they do come out though. I'm going to take the bottoms. You take your pastry cream and you're going to fill the bottom. It's been sitting out for a little while. When you top it like this, 
it's a little messy. You're going to take your sugar and you're going to just sprinkle them. I don't know what I did the bottom of that one. And then you're going to take a dollop of whipped cream. Now, I made this whipped cream the other day. And um, I got a spoon over here, right? We're going to take some of this whipped cream and going to put it in a pastry bag or a Ziploc baggie and just put off the tip. We're going to put a little bit of whipped cream on the top. Oh, look at that. And then we're going to top it with a cherry. So when the other ones come out, we have time, I will show you. But there is your Zeppelis. Put them in the refrigerator, keep them cool because of the pastry cream and the whipped cream. And um, voila. Okay, so there's our Zeppelis. Um, they should be refrigerated. I'm the pastry cream's a little loose, but those are different shells I made earlier. This one I put in a pan that had a design. That one I just put in. The ones that we were doing for the show just came out of the oven. So here they are. They're nice little guys. So these are little, little bite-sized little guys. So we'll uh, deal with those later. But I do want to finish off the hot cross buns. So the hot cross buns came out of the oven. We had them sit down, uh, sit, and you know that I... Uh, Cover them with that nice, simple syrup. And by the way, you can actually glaze them with apricot jelly or maybe even like an orange jelly. I wouldn't do anything with a marmalade because you want it to, to melt. Now, here's our icing. Very simple, right across. If you want extra icing, put a blob. Hence, the cross. And yes, it doesn't have to be perfect. If it was just me, I would be, you know, having a ton on it because, oh, not paying attention here. Here we go. Oops, kind of missed that guy a little bit. Oh, no. Well, I'm going to have to make a little bit more in a little bit just to finish off the cross. But you get the idea. Hot cross buns for Easter. Put the little covers on them and send it off with your guests or your family or whatever. Have that on your family table. Have a happy Easter.